The next objective is to interpret a confidence level. So remember, the previous objective was how to interpret a confidence, a confidence interval, which is the actual values from here to here. The confidence level is something totally different. The confidence level, to, to break it down as simple as possible, it's really just the success rate of your method. It's the success rate of your method. So this, this definition here might be a little confusing, but remember, it's the success rate of your method. So it gives the overall success rate of the method used to calculate the confidence interval. That is, in C percent of all possible samples, the interval computed from the sample data will capture the true parameter. Uh, I'm going to open up a simulator to help you, to give you a visual of what that means. So to interpret what a confidence level is, which remember is different than how to interpret a confidence interval, we would say that we are 95% confident, uh, or I'm sorry, to say that we are 95% confident is shorthand for if we take many samples of the same size from this population, about 95% of them will result in an interval that captures the actual parameter value. So the confidence level does not tell us the chance that a particular confidence interval captures the population parameter. It tells us that if we repeated this process over and over again, we would have about a 95% success rate. Let me open up a um, simulator to, to give you a, a visual for this. For this simulator to make sense, again, you have to remember that a confidence interval, the goal of a confidence interval is to use a sample to try and capture an unknown population parameter. So here we have a population distribution and then the sampling distribution, which we talked about in chapter seven. Uh, a sampling distribution is used to create a confidence interval. We're gonna get more into that in the next sections, but as of now, just know, we're trying to capture the true population parameter. So this line right here, mu is what we're trying to capture using a confidence interval. So my sample size is 20 and the level of confidence that I have is 95. So I'll take one sample from the population and you can see here's my sample and I built an interval because here's my mean, my sample mean, and I've built an interval. Now you can see that this was a successful interval because from the mean up to the highest value, I've actually captured the unknown population parameter. So this was a successful confidence interval using this sample. Let's take another sample. And again, we have a new sample and that is successful because it captured the unknown population parameter. Now, in this case, it's not unknown because I can see what it is. But this is the way that a sample, uh, this is the way that a confidence interval works. You use a sample, you build an interval, hoping that you capture it, the unknown parameter somewhere in there. So now let's take, um, or you can see here, I've got two hits. Hit means that I've captured it with, with two intervals. I've only taken a total of two intervals. So my percent, my success rate is 100%. So let's take 25 samples and see how this changes. So there were my first two, and then I've added in quite a few more. You can see this red interval right here is an example of a sample mean that builds an interval, but it did not capture the population parameter. This green line does not fall within the interval. And so right now, my success rate, I have 27 total and 26 were hits. So I have a 96% success rate. Well, let's keep taking 25 samples until, I don't know, let's get to, let's take about a thousand samples and see what the success rate is if I repeat this over and over and over again. And so now I'm at about a thousand samples. And so I've created a thousand intervals using a thousand different samples. And you can see my success rate is 96. So 96 of the intervals that I created, 96% of them, have successfully captured the unknown population parameter. So my confidence level is 95 and my success rate is 96. And that's because um, the, the, these really should be equal values. I'm actually surprised it's 96 and not, it hasn't dropped to 95. If I keep going, eventually it will drop to 95 because again, probability is in the long run. So if you keep repeating this process over and over again, it will eventually level out to 95%. Uh, let's reset this and look at a specific example. I'll take 25 samples here. So I've got 25 samples. I want you to see what happens when I change my confidence level. So right now I have 95% confidence. What if I decrease this? 
you can see that the confidence intervals are getting smaller and smaller because the level of confidence is basically, it's essentially it's the size net that you're using to catch the fish. Use a bigger net if you wanna be more confident. Use a smaller net if you don't wanna be as confident. So as I increase my confidence, the intervals get wider and wider and wider. So the level of confidence dictates how wide your interval is or how narrow your interval is. The other thing that dictates the, um, the size of your interval is the sample size, which we're gonna talk about that more in the future. As of now, you need to know that the level of confidence means you reach out further if you wanna be higher, more confident, and you don't reach out as far if you wanna be less confident. But if I want to be 95% confident, then if I keep taking these samples again, you'll see, let's take about a thousand more and you'll see that my success rate is 95% because I have a confidence level of 95%. But if I increase my sample size, now let's increase it or change the sample size. Let's do a sample size of 20, 75 instead of uh, what it was at 20. And I take another thousand samples. You'll see that my success rate is still the same. It's still going to be 95%. So it doesn't matter the sample size. If my sample size is 10 and my confidence level is 95, I'll have a, I'll have a, a confidence level. Of, I'll have 95% success rate. If my sample size is 70, I'll still have a 95 success rate if my confidence level is 95. So no matter the sample size, that doesn't change your level of confidence. More on sample size uh, in the future. So hopefully that was a good example of what the 95% success rate means, and that all comes from the level of confidence you want to have. So a lot of people want to interpret the confidence level as um, the probability of capturing the unknown proportion or the unknown mean, which is not true. It doesn't tell us the chance. It either it, it either captures it or it doesn't. There's no, the probability is either zero or one. It, you've captured it or you have not. So the, the correct way to interpret the confidence level is it's really a copy paste statement again. If we take many samples of the same size from this population, about 95% of them will result in an interval that captures the, the parameter value. So just a quick refresher from earlier in the video. Um, the formula for a confidence interval is the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. And we broke down the margin of error into what was called the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. And we can also call the point estimate a statistic instead of saying point estimate. So here's what I just said. It's the statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. And this is important here because the level of confidence is determined, or the level of confidence determines the critical value that you're going to have. These values might sound familiar. If we wanna be 68% confident, our critical value is gonna be one or about one. If we wanna be 95% confident, our critical value is gonna be about two. If we wanna be 99.7% confident, our critical value will be about three. And that comes from the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So the level of confidence basically just means, do you go out one standard deviation or do you go out two standard deviations or do you go out three standard deviations? You're just reaching further whatever the standard deviation is because one times this or two times this or three times this. So your critical value is just how far out do you wanna reach based on the level of confidence you want. Now you can increase the margin of error because th these two together are the margin of error. You can increase the margin of error by increasing your critical value, or you can increase the margin of error by having a larger standard deviation of the statistic. And remember, this is all based on the sample size. If your sample size is larger, then this value will be smaller. If your sample size is smaller, then the standard deviation of the statistic will be uh, larger. So before we get further into that, let's look at an example of how to interpret the confidence level from this problem. Two weeks before a presidential election, a polling organization asked a random sample of registered voters the following question. If the presidential election were held today, 
would you vote for candidate A or candidate B? Based on this poll, the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion who favor candidate A is 0.48 to 0.54. So it's the same problem from before. Now we're just interpreting the confidence level, which is this 95% here. So all this means is if we were to select many random samples of the same size from the same population of registered voters and construct 95% confidence intervals using each sample, about 95% of the intervals would capture the true proportion of all registered voters who favor candidate A in the election. Essentially, it's the success rate of this method. If we keep repeating this process over and over again, take many, many samples, create many, many intervals, about 95% of them will capture the true proportion of favor candidate A. If you want, you can pause the video and read this if you want to refresh on what I just said before. Before we move on to the next two uh, or the last two objectives, just remember this is how we interpret a confidence interval, which is or how we interpret a confidence level, which is not the same as how we interpret the confidence interval.